What is up? I am Crypto Mason and welcome back to the Crypto Mason YouTube channel. Shout out to the Gold Squad. We look for gold in every single aspect of our lives and we always find it. Now today, we have a jam-packed daily market update, folks. The market is looking like we're going to turn bullish here or we already are turning bullish. Um, but we have so much stuff to cover. HBAR, XRP, Ethereum, Bitcoin, altcoins, all of it. So before we do, make sure that you are following me on Twitter right there. Also follow my Instagram. Um, I am heading to Los Angeles, LA soon uh, for NFTLA, right? And then I'm going to head to Miami for Bitcoin Miami. So you, you're going to want to pay attention on my Instagram story. That's where you're going to keep up with everything. So also, if you're going to NFTLA, drop me a DM on Instagram or Twitter. Maybe uh, we'll see each other there. <clears throat> now, I'm, I'll also be able... Or I will also uh, be partaking in this Twitter spaces today at 1 p.m. PST. Uh, this is with the NFT gathering. Uh, this is a conference in Banff, Canada. Okay, Banff, Canada. Um, so if you're coming to that one, tune into that. Even if you're not coming to it, tune into the spaces as well. So let's take a look at the market we have a hundred billion plus volume today, right? A hundred billion plus volume today. We are approaching two trillion. Last night, I think we actually took, uh, overtook two trillion. And of course we bounced off that and we're at 1.93. Bitcoin up 3.64% in 24 hours. Ethereum is above 3000 right there. I really like to see that. Um, Bitcoin 42,000. We got Binance Coin at four hundred seven dollars, XRP eighty four cents, Solana not even at a hundred yet. If we check the top gainers today, IODEX is pumping great. EOS has exploded. Helium, right? Helium, man. If anybody was stacking helium, you're up thirteen percent right now. Bitcoin Cash, Qtum or Quantum, Ethereum Classic is still pumping. But let's take a look at the Bitcoin chart. This is actually unexpected for me. I actually thought that we were just going to continue down below, back below this line that I have right there. But we actually tested this zone and then went down and now we've broken above it, which is very good, actually. Um, so that 42,600, we're sitting right there, right? We've been covering these, these macro people, or not macro, but these charts that say if we break past 42,600, we're probably going to 46,000 uh, very soon, right? So that could be amazing um, if we do end up doing that. Keep in mind, the Bitcoin conference is coming up. Now, this is actually important, right? Because if you remember last year, Bitcoin was pumping like crazy, crazy all the way up until the conference. And then it started dumping while the conference was on and in the days before the conference. Um, I yeah i have my own theories about why that is but there apparently there is a such a huge announcement happening at bitcoin miami that will be bigger than any other announcement they've had there even last year when they announced that el salvador was uh using bitcoin as legal or gonna introduce bitcoin as legal tender apparently it's gonna be even bigger than that so possibly another country accepting uh bitcoin as legal tender which would be insane and if you're wondering how i know that is because um on altcoin daily's channel there was a dude on there from the conference explaining that they're going to have a mega announcement and there's i'm there's probably going to be a ton of announcements so bitcoin i mean these next couple weeks could be looking real good for bitcoin let's zoom out to the macro world scale here we have biden tweeting out i've previously warned about the potential that Russia could conduct malicious cyber activity against the U.S. Today, I'm reiterating those warnings based on evolving intelligence uh, that the Russian government is exploring options for potential cyber attacks. I've been telling you about this for like a year now, that this is going to be the narrative. This is going to happen. <clears throat> cyber attacks will happen. They will. Guaranteed, in my mind, or in my opinion. Biden also said the federal government 
is doing its part to get ready for rush, uh, potential Russian cyber attacks. We are prepared to help private sector companies with tools and expertise, but it is your decision um, as to the steps you'll take and your responsibility to take them. Dude, it's going to go down. It is going to happen, right? Cyber pandemic is going to happen. But the, the, the only good news about that is that that means Corona is over. Okay, if that happens, because they're planning to launch this cyber pandemic after the current pandemic is over, right? So all like if you look at the World Economic Forum videos, they're all positioned to where we're talking like um we just saw what happened in the corona pandemic. Let's not let it happen um in a cyber way. A cyber pandemic would be 50 times as bad, right? That's how it's positioned. So they're talking as if we just learned a lesson from Corona and now we're moving to a cyber pandemic. So watch this narrative play out. This is the president of the United States, Biden, right there, Joe Biden, talking about cyber attacks, okay? Very real stuff happening. Now let's talk about why Ethereum is outperforming Bitcoin. Ethereum is outperforming Bitcoin <clears throat> because the Ethereum merge is scheduled for June 22, June 22nd, okay? That's only three months away. So right now we're watching Ethereum 2.0 get, or, or this merge get priced into the Ethereum price. That's what we're watching right now, three months early. We could be seeing some kind of pricing in of this as more people understand what it is, right? So we've explained this a million times, what this is, the merge, Ethereum is going to proof of work to proof of stake, right? Proof of work to proof of stake, all mining will be gone. And that is why Ethereum Classic is pumping, right? You see Ethereum Classic <clears throat> in the past seven days, it's done 60%, right? That's why, because this is going to be still proof of work. Ethereum Classic is not moving to proof of stake. Um, so that's why Ethereum is doing so good. As you can see, we I had my resistance line here. We've definitely broken above that a few days ago, actually. We've got some HBAR stuff as well. HBAR, I believe, is getting ready to rock it. Despite all the FUD, yes, I do see the FUD. I do see that one idiot on Twitter um, who's sort of switched up completely on HBAR. Um, but he is, like, he is presenting just facts but he's putting his own spin on what it is, right? And I hope that Hedera formally addresses those claims, even though they already have, I think. Um, I, I've seen a clip uh, where they ask Lehman, why why are they selling HBAR, right, to fund operations? But that dude has uncovered some weird stuff. I'm not going to take a stance yet. I'm still bullish as ever on HBAR. This chart looks real good to me. It looks like it's about to start going up. Um, we also just had the big four bank has already minted tokens on the Hedera Hashgraph network uh, t or testnet. This is ANZ. Uh, this is the, what is it? The second largest bank by assets in Australia and third largest bank by market capitalization. So A and Z is massive and they're already using um, or they're already testing Hedera right here. One thing I don't like is this spelling mistake right here. One advantage of Hasgraph was that it's low cost and low carbon infrastructure. Basically, they're already working on using uh, Hedera Hashgraph right here. <clears throat> what, what Hedera needs right now is a powerful announcement of a governing council member. That is what it needs right now to to kind of mute the FUD, okay? ANZ is also working with uh, Fireblocks. We know about Fireblocks. They have Jay Clayton um, as the um, as an advisor. So moving on, we also have this on Reddit uh, pointing out how powerful ServiceNow, their Now platform, um, is going to be using Hedera. There's going to be Aflac. Uh, Overstock is massive. Al Jazeera, Siemens, Wayfair, right? Massive, co uh, massive companies are going to be using Hedera with this ServiceNow platform. ServiceNow is the biggest thing ever, and they are a governing council member. Just a ma just think about how crazy that is. Um, so we don't know when this is going to actually go live. 
but this is a great um great read if you want to read that update on the ripple lawsuit we have ripple uh not wanting to delay uh the resolution to the case so basically yesterday sec filed a motion to request that the court allow a brief extension to inform the court about its intentions uh regarding conducting any additional discovery so they and ripple doesn't want this ripple doesn't want to delay this because it's remaining confident that xrp is not an unregistered security we also have this from jeremy hogan basically this is a part um of a of this document right here he says i tried to analyze this for you in a true legal sense but my mind was blown by the part below and i couldn't think about much else after is the sec potentially hiding a document in which the sec concluded that xrp was not a security what does solomon know and i believe solomon is the lawyer here <laughs> look at this um that the sec's own director of the division of corporate corporation finance had analyzed a substantially similar digital asset and maybe even xrp itself and concluded that it was not a security are they hiding a document that deems xrp not a security that is where we're at right now they might be actually hiding a document that um that where they did analyze xrp <clears throat> so uh, and jeremy says right here uh john deaton said it months ago if those emails are required to be turned over there will be a settlement shortly after so we need those emails to be turned over I'm honestly very, very tired of covering this case. Um, I just want it to be over, man. I just want it to be over. But it is so... The, the ripple effect, no pun intended. Actually, all the puns intended. The ripple effect is massive, okay? Now, I wanted to remind you of this clip of Hester Pierce. This relates to XRP not being a security. About a 20-second clip. We're going to play it. Watch, watch what she says right here. What we're doing is is we're saying that we think it's part, it's being sold as part of an investment contract, um, which means that there are promises being made around the sale of that asset. It doesn't mean that the asset itself necessarily has to be a security. It means that it was being sold as a security. Then the question becomes, at what point can someone sell that asset as a, not as a security? And that is a very difficult line. So it has to do with the marketing around the coin. That's what she's saying. It might have been sold as a security, but XRP can be a cryptocurrency and is a cryptocurrency, right? But shes they're referring to how it was sold. There was no investment contract that we know about, right? I have a whole, doc, I have a whole graphic explaining why. I've shown it a million times on here why XRP is not an investment contract. Um, so there, I, I think that this is more about the community than it is about <clears throat> the actual Ripple team. I think it is about the community promising $10,000 XRP. Oh my goodness. Writing articles about how $10,000 XRP should happen. That's what this is about, dude. This is about crypto Twitter. I'm sorry to just tell the truth. This is about all of the people speculating around xrp and tell like saying on twitter like buy xrp it's going to ten thousand dollars right that is a promise like you see it's about that in my opinion or that's a large part of it it's about a lot of other stuff but that's a large part of it and that's why someone like hester pierce can literally say it's not a security but the way it was sold and the stuff around it might have been um breaking the howie test <clears throat> now we have several central banks and the Bank for International Settlements um, working on Project Dunbar, okay? This proves that financial institutions could use central bank digital currencies to transact directly with one another on a shared platform. Basically, we've got a ton of banks coming together, um, developing a prototype for a common digital currencies platform. It is on the way, dude. We already know this, right? But this is going to take longer than, than we think. I think CBDC implementation might take a little bit longer than we think. Um, or it might be faster. It's one of the two. It's right around the corner or it's or it's in a couple years, a few years. Final thing we'll end off with is Japan is speeding up cryptocurrency listings with what they call a green list. 
Um, and the green list, as we can see right here, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and Litecoin are among the cryptocurrencies on the green list, which are deemed widely handled in Japan. Okay, so they're speeding up their listings, which this is cool. This is this is really good. Um, and as you can see, they accept XRP, right? USA is the only one that has a problem with XRP. Um, so that is cool to see Japan um, adopting right there. But that is all we've got for the daily market update. Make sure you're following me on Twitter, Instagram. Join the Telegram group. I love every single one of you. And goodbye. Crow, Steve.